Well, good morning, everyone. I know that clock back there is a little off, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Can you all hear me okay? Praise God. Come on in. Have a seat. I'm going to ask you to stand if you can and join us. Hey, listen, listen, did you know that the Lord God, he fights our battles? Did you know that? Every situation, every burden we have, he takes that. He takes that. What we have to do, what we have to do is put that burden at the foot of the cross. Amen. Now we're ready to worship. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right, praise God. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. That's right. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the bell belongs to you. Praise Him. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the bell belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the bell belongs to you. Oh mighty fortress. You go before us, nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, the bell belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet. I sing through the night, oh God, the bell belongs to you. Oh God, the bell belongs to you. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. Good morning. Welcome to the 11 o'clock worship service right here at Nutrioso Bible Church. We are glad you're here. 
Thank you, Pastor, for stirring up the kingdom, kids. Uh, yeah, I bet. Okay. Um, busy weekend. Good crowd in church. Uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, as you know. Uh, Memorial Day being a day that's been set aside to honor those men and women who have given their life in the service of our country. And that... Uh, is close, very close to some of us here. So um, it's nice to uh, have family time and cookouts and barbecues and do things, but to remember the true meaning of the federal holiday, Memorial Day, uh, is a heart matter. At least it is to me. So thank you for worshiping with us and being here. Uh, on a lighter note, it's also National Family Fun Day. Um, and in conjunction with that, it's National Paper Airplane Day. So I'm not, tell hey, I'm not telling you what to do, but those of you that can build paper airplanes, um, it'd be the day to do it. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, join me in looking at the bulletin board side of the um, bulletin that Linda publishes every week. Jason, you've got them in your hand. If you need a church bulletin, Raise your hand. Jason will put one in it. Anybody? Everyone's good. Whoops. We got one. No? None. All right. Uh, we, finished, uh, we finished session number four of six this morning in our uh, Sunday school, adult Sunday school, uh, the study by John Ortberg, The Life You've Always Wanted, Spiritual Disciplines for Ordinary People, and it was good. It was good. We, we talked about meditating today and uh, meditating on Scripture, and we've got two more to go, and the participation is terrific. So thank you, folks, for that. Uh, we have a potluck on June the 9th. Our second Sunday potluck will be on Sunday, June the 9th. NBC Women's Brunch will be 10 to noon on Friday, June 21st at Trail Raiders. Trail Riders. Uh, let me look. No? It's already there. No. What are we going to do without the... No clipboard. <laughs> okay, but Heidi, you do have an announcement to make, right? Jason, would you bring her the mic, please? Goodness. How am I supposed to say anything after that? Okay, um, so we have a lot of new people here, and um, I wanted to tell those that are new and those that uh, have gone before, we are going to have another women's conference by Reverend Dr. Cami Passmore. And we're going to have it in August. It's absolutely amazing. Um, right now we're targeting August 23rd, which is a Friday, and August 24th, Saturday. And um, <laughs> we're really blessed because on Friday we'll have a meet and greet in the evening. And then we have a group of men in this church. Uh, John likes to call them the stud muffin servers. I didn't bring, make that up. He get it, did. Get it right, which is the NBC stud muffins. Oh, I'm sorry, NBC stud muffins will be serving us dinner, and, um, and then on Saturday, and we'll do a meet and greet, and then on Saturday, they will provide a served lunch as well. And so there'll be three class studies or sessions on Saturday, and on Friday, it'll just kind of be what she's going to talk about. And uh, it's going to be about the joy of living in Christ. And it just sounds like it's going to be great. And I would ask that uh, those of you that are new or have not gone to this any time to please talk to the folks um, that have been to it the last couple of years. Uh, we all walk out of there just so blessed. And it is really amazing. It's good fellowship. It's good prayer time. And she, the way she presents things 
is so unique, and it just kind of, it, it goes through any type of uh, shield or anything. Isn't that right? I mean, it really, it really is an amazing study. So the thing is, is um, we'll have a registration. I'm not going to pass out a sign-up sheet yet. We'll probably put it in the bulletin um, soon, and then we'll put out a flyer. Uh, registration fee is $50, but we also have scholarships available who can't come up with that $50, and that's fine. And whoever needs that, just get with me, and we'll keep it private, and we want to make sure that everybody gets to go. So Friday, the 23rd of August, and Saturday, the 24th, if you'd mark it in your calendars, and please feel free. How many have gone to the con uh, conferences before? Could you raise your hand? So anybody who's thinking that they would like to go, please talk to these people. You will, you will find that they uh, definitely encourage you to go. So more information later. Thank you, Heidi. Um, the next item in the bulletin says, please join us for a family-style worship service on June 30th. Children from Kingdom Kids will participate. Um, Pastor, do you have anything you want to add to that? Or yeah, just real fast, like the, for the uh, family service, um, we're, the kids will participate in a song that they've got picked already. It's about heaven. And uh, so I will preach about heaven, and uh, we will do a, a sermon that's a little bit more kid-friendly, so even I will understand, right? <laughs> and, uh, and then at the end of that, we'll, uh, of course, have our... I'm sure you're going to tell us our business meeting right afterwards. But I think it's going to be fun, and it's going to be cool to have the kids participate in what we're doing in here once in a while. So. And Jackie, you had something? Yes. I am circulating a petition to uh, stop the windmills that they want to put up. And I have a petition and some information on the baptistry. So please sign the petition and stop the sanity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's on the back, the paperwork? The back, on the back. Okay, got it. Um, annual business meeting will be held immediately after worship service on June the 30th. Uh, we, we do this every year, hence the word annual. <laughs> and um, it, it doesn't take long at all. Uh, we'll have you out of here in an hour and a half, two hours. Just kidding. And uh, please stay for that. We go over the budget and talk about things going on, min different ministries of the church. So that will be taking place on June the 30th. Also, uh, I can tell you that the month of June is a Fifth Sunday Missions Month. And it will be, uh, we will be honoring with our love offerings the entire month Randy Elliott, who is our missionary to the Yavapai County Sheriff's Department main jail in Camp Verde, and they've also built another jail in Prescott, so he is finding himself going back and forth six and eight times a week to minister to those inmates that are in Prescott, plus the ones he's uh, five or six hundred of them in Camp Verde. So that, plus he goes to two or three Bible studies a week down in Phoenix, this man meets himself coming and going, and bless his heart. When we talk on the phone, there's no such thing as a five-minute conversation. It just doesn't happen. So uh, five, Fifth Sunday Missions Month will be in June. So plan now to participate in that, and we'll honor Randy and Rhonda and their granddaughter, McKenna, who just graduated from eighth grade. And that will be taking place... Um, any other announcements that we need to talk about before we go to prayer requests? Seems like there's something I was going to say, and I don't don't remember it. No? Okay. The what? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, it's Family Fun Day and Paper Airplane Day. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Um, whoop, Fred. I just wanted to ask again. Can you repeat the date that Randy and Rhonda will be here? Oh, they will not be here. That We will be honoring them with the Fifth Sunday Missions offering for the month of June. Yeah, he will not be here making a ministry presentation. 
And, and that's sort of sad because whenever they come, they get to stay with Shirley and I, and we get, oh, talk about fellowship. Holy smoke. They are great folks. Okay. Um, any other announcements before we move on? No? All right. It's now time for praise and prayer. If you have a prayer request or a praise, raise your hand. Here comes the mic. Hey, Kim. I don't know if you guys had heard on the news, but one of our uh, a state representative, I think it's Wisconsin, um, his daughter, 23-year-old, and his son-in-law, Davey and Natalie Lloyd, they're full-time missionaries in Haiti, and they were killed by gangs. And, I mean, his heart's breaking, I'm sure, but both the Lloyd family and um, its representative, Ben Baker, his daughter, 23, precious, but they were shot along with another third person from all the gang violence in Haiti and stuff. So if you could just keep those families in prayer. You got all the details on that, Jackie? Sort of? Okay. We'll make sure. Yeah, you can brief her, get her updated. Man, any other? Uh, there's one. I don't know how many of you may know this couple, uh, Larry and uh, Dee Dee Marin. They're relatively new residents to uh, Dry Valley. Um, he passed away suddenly, I believe it was Monday morning, um, early Monday morning. They were doing some reconstruction on their house, and the contractor found him lying on the floor Monday morning. Dee Dee was in Globe when it happened. So uh, just keep the, uh, they, they have an extended family, children on both sides. So keep their family uh, in prayers. Uh, it was a sudden death that nobody saw coming, so. Thanks, Jeff. Up front, Jeff, Laura, oh, okay, Jason. Continue to pray for Mary Blair. She's a little bit better, but she needs prayer. And Laura has one. And I think of this often, but haven't really asked for prayer here, but it was on my heart heavy driving up here today. Um, but I'd like to ask for prayer for my older daughter, Caitlin, not my daughter that comes here with me from time to time. Um, but she, she's just very negative. I mean, she was raised knowing the Lord used to invite her friends to church and Awanas and everything. But she's she struggles with what she believes. And... Um, isn't really in fellowship. I mean, she's just turned 30, has three beautiful, wonderful, uh, my three grandchildren, um, and, you know, great husband, father, uh, stay-at-home mom, but she just doesn't have the Lord in her life. And, I mean, they just went on a vacation for her birthday, and my son-in-law sent me pictures of this beautiful place, and I asked her how, you know, the vacation was, and she's like, oh, it was you know, really hard, and she doesn't see the good in life and just is very negative. So I just really want to pray that um, she would feel the Lord's presence and maybe he could put somebody in her life that would lead her back to the Lord so she can appreciate things, you know, all the good things in life. We have her covered. Anyone else? Carl? My brother um, Scott and his wife Lisa are having a big family get together in uh, in Sholo this weekend. All their their kiddos are coming to visit, so I just pray that they're just going to have a great time together. We're actually going to go there after church, spend a little time with them, and that well, everybody will make it back to their homes all over the place safely. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Um, Mike, um, could you hand them? The mic, the mic. <laughs> um, could you give us an update on how things are going over at the community center? Um, yeah, I would like to give a little praise and prayer for um, the support that we've received so far. We have the uh, free coffee that's offered to the community or anybody that you know is just going through the neighborhood. We're going to be there Monday through Friday, seven to eleven. Uh, people keep telling me the food's pretty decent, so uh, if you get hungry while you're uh, drinking your free coffee, we have hot food and pastries available. So 
Uh, we're doing great. We're doing better than I hoped for. So just uh, continued prayer that we can keep this going for the community and get more and more neighbors together. Um, we had one couple, a set of neighbors that had lived next to each other along the same fence line for two years. And all they knew when they came in that day for coffee was, hey, don't you live there? And by the end of the day, they were acquainted with each other. They were a little closer as neighbors. And that's what we're striving for down there is just come on down, sit with your neighbors, get to, get to know the community, the history, and uh, just kick back and have a good time. So if anybody you know, wants to come on down, we're going to be there Monday through Friday. Okay. 7 to 11. I can personally attest <laughs> to the good food that Mike has down there. I've been known to uh, eat a few of those chorizo burritos, and uh, they are excellent. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, Fred, um, if he brought you the mic, would you offer the morning prayer, please? To start, I also wanted to say thank you all for praying for Denise and Marlon on their trip. They are going to try to hide in Reno to avoid the Memorial Day traffic. And uh, so far, so good. Safe travels. Father God, thank you for bringing each and every one of us here to hear your word. We pray that you would bless Pastor John as he brings us your scripture that we would hide it in our hearts, that it would be life-changing, transforming, and make us more like your son, Jesus. We thank you for the blessings, the praises that have been offered and those that have been held. We pray for those people who were lifted up, Lord, for us to pray for this week, for devastating losses in their families. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones during wars, who have died defending our freedoms that we enjoy so well here now and since they have passed. Lord, we thank you for their service. We ask you to bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good to see all your smiling faces. Praise God. If you're able, will you stand and join us as we continue to worship our Lord? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning. No turning back Though none go with me I still will follow Though none go with me I still will follow Though none go with me I still will follow No turning back No turning back Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Who am 
am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, his free indeed, I'm a child of God, yes, I At last he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, his free indeed. I'm a child. a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me, I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Through the sun sets free, oh, his free indeed, I'm a child of I am in my father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Yeah. Praise you, Lord God. He's chosen every one of us. That's right. chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child. You may be seated at this time. God is good. God is good. God can break those chains that we have that hold us. He breaks those strongholds. He breaks those chains in every situation. All we have to do is give it to him. Give it to him. Place it at the foot of the cross. Let him fight our battles. Let him break every chain every stronghold. Amen. There is power in the name 
name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, yeah. Oh, sufficient sacrifice. So freely given, such a price. What our redemption, heaven's gates. Swing wide All sufficient sacrifice So freely given such a price What our redemption heaven's gates Swing wide there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's do it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I have such a big mouth, you wouldn't have known it, huh? Today is a special day at New Sriosa Bible Church. As we move through this service, you're going to realize why I'm calling it the rock star and the clown 
I'm betting some of y'all already know why I'm calling it that. Do you know God can use anybody? Can anybody attest to that? I mean, you come up here on Sundays and let me talk to you, so he must be able to use anybody, right? He can certainly use a rock star, as long as the rock star will just humble themselves to him, right? Allow him. And because he's God, he can use a clown, even a clown, right? All he asks is that we allow him to do it. All he asks is that we choose him. It's up to us. He doesn't force us. You know, one thing that I want you to make sure you remember is this. If God wanted robotic worship, here's what we'd be doing right now. Why? Because he's God. He's God. So if that's what he wanted, that's what you'd be doing. What he wants is he wants you to choose him. He wants you to choose to love him and serve him and have a relationship with him. He can use anybody if you just let him. Number one in your outline, God can use anyone for his glory, even a clown. Even a clown. I'll tell you what really sticks out for me, though. What really shows his power is when he does something special and uses both of them at the same time in the same place. That's amazing because people, we have a hard time wrapping around heads around things like that. If you're the rock star, you may not want to stoop down to uh, work with a clown. And if you're a clown, you may not be able to understand what a rock star is doing, right? But God can make it happen. God can make it work. So today we're going to get started by taking a real quick look at the biblical structure of the church. Just an overview, we're not going to dig real deep, of how God wants us to run the church, the body of Christ. The first level of leadership in a Christian church. Hi, Phyllis. I didn't even see you over there. I'll get over there in a minute. Don't go anywhere. The first level of leadership in the church is the elders. The elders. Now, Paul spells out the qualifications for an elder in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. He's not bothering me one bit. You just stay right there. I love it. Don't worry about it. I might understand him better than most people in, in the room, actually. So again, Paul spells out the qualifications for an elder in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. When he says, here's a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Now that overseer, that word overseer, the Greek word here that was used is episcope. It means bishop, pastor, elder. So Paul's saying if you want to be a bishop, a pastor, or an elder, you, this is what you got to do. This is the qualifications for being to, uh, in that office or for doing that job, taking on that role. Elders are to be the spiritual overseers of the church. Spiritual overseers. It has to be somebody who is willing and able to teach and pray with people. Spiritual overseers. And as such, they should manage the affairs of the church with the goal of doing so in a way that honors and glorifies God. Everything they do should be in the spirit. So number two in your outline, scripturally, elders are to be the spiritual leaders and overseers of the church and conduct all church business in the spirit. In the spirit. The pastor is an elder. He's the under shepherd of the flock. He should manage the way the church operates within the structure that he's given in the bylaws for the church and more importantly, the structure right here in the owner's manual. That's what the pastor's supposed to do, right? MBC is an elder-led church. Bob Oppel is the chairman of the elder committee. He's been on the, on the board. I think he's been involved since the beginning of the church, right? Yeah. He's only 40. I don't know how he did that. but <laughs> Brother Skip Brazel and Bruce Novak and myself are the remainder of the elder board. And as many of you know, 
uh, Bob just presented Fred Hutt as a candidate for the opening that, was, uh, that, that happened when Rosie retired here not too long ago. So that's the first level of leadership in the church, elders. The next level of leadership in the church are deacons. Deacons. Now we're going to continue on in 1 Timothy 3. We're going to look at verses 8 through 10 because Paul says in the same way, deacons are to be worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and then if there's nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Now, the Greek word for deacons here is diakonos. It means servants or minister. It actually means a person who renders service and help to others in the church. So number three in your outline, scripturally, deacons are to be the servants and helpers in the church and should carry out the responsibilities of their office under the direction of the elder board. Here's an interesting tidbit I picked up when I was studying for the sermon. That word diakonos, which is deacons, is probably connected to the verb dioko, which means to hasten after, after or to pursue. Don't you find that interesting? To hasten after or to pursue. I certainly want my elders, my deacons, and all of you people doing the same thing. We should all hasten after and pursue God. Don't you think? That should be, I mean, that should be our goal every day in our lives, right? Now, I want to show you something about this position of deacon, because this is what we're focusing on today. I want to show you how it began, where it came from, how it got started. We're going to take a look at Acts 6, verses 1 through 7. It says, in those days. Now, those days were the very beginning of the church. It was just getting off the ground. In those days, the number of disciples was increasing. The Hellenistic Jews... Among them complained against the Hebraic Jews, go figure, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So number four in your outline, the enemy has always tried to cause division within the body of Christ, even in the very beginning of the church. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. I want to make sure we make a note here. They're not looking down their nose at folks who wait on tables. They use that vernacular because it was a, a problem with food distribution. But at the end of the day, what they're saying is we need to do what elders are supposed to do. We need to be the spiritual leaders of the church. It said, brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. So you get this. Now, the day-to-day -day nuts and bolts stuff of the operation, which is critical, is it not? I mean, if you never cleaned this place, you wouldn't want to walk in, right? You got to pay the bills. You got to pull. I mean, I got to tell you something, man. I, I came to church last week. I don't know if you saw it, but there were weeds growing through that ramp out there. They were, they were sticking out and waving. I was like, man, I'm going to come up and pull these weeds. So I was planning on coming up and pull the weeds. And Brother Jake did it. 22 years old, so much better for him to do it than me. <laughs> really appreciate it, Jake, really appreciate it. Those day-to-day -day things, those nuts and bolts things, they've got to be handled. They're critical to the operation of the church. Number five in your outline, deacons should take care of the operational tasks of the church so the elders and pastor can focus more on their role as a spiritual leader. It doesn't mean that the pastor or the elders can't help out, but they shouldn't be bound with those tasks because it takes them away from being the spiritual leaders they need to be in the church. Continuing in verse 5, this proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicano, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch to convert to, who, a convert from Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. I want to pause there because I want to make sure you see what's happening here. We needed help in the church. The elders found that help, and what did they do? They laid hands on those new deacons and prayed over them. Now we're going to see what I think is really important that we see, which is the result of the church adding this level of leadership. Verse 7 says, so the word of God spread. The word of God spread. As soon as they put this level of leadership in, 
the word of God spread. It says the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Number six in your outline, proper scriptural structure is critical for a church to grow and win more people to Christ, which is what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to make disciples of all nations, right? So that biblical structure within the church is what puts us in a position to be able to do that. Now, I do want to point out something here in Acts 3 that uh, some people may be noticing right now. It, what they said was, go choose seven men. Seven men. So the question is, do deacons have to be men? Don't you think we need to get in the owner's manual and figure that out? Not just an opinion or something. We need a scriptural reference, a scriptural answer. Let's look at Romans 16, 1, where Paul says, I commend to you, our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Sincrea. So what we see, a very short verse, but we see that he's commending her. He's saying it's a woman, it's our sister, Phoebe, and he's saying that she is a deacon in the church. For the record, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, the Greek word that was used for deacon here in Romans 16 is exactly the same word we saw in 1 Timothy 3. Diakono, servant, minister, a person who renders service and help to others in the church. See, this tells us that scripturally, women can hold the position of deacon, or more accurately, deaconess. Deaconess. Number seven in your outline, the Bible clearly states that a scripturally qualified woman can fill the position of deacon or more accurately deaconess. Understand she's got to meet the qualifications, the requirements outlined in 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 10. So we're going to look at that again. In the same way, deacons are to be worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine, not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and then if nothing against them is against them, let them serve as deacons. I told you today was a special day here at NBC. Today we are going to introduce the level of leadership, the office of deacon that we've never had in this church before. And the first deacon is actually going to be a deaconess. So in a few minutes, my fellow elders will join me up here, and we will put our hands on Sister Peg Novak, and we're going to pray over her, and I'm going to anoint her as the deaconess for women here at NBC. Now, in a minute, I'm going to come back and tell you what that means, okay? The deacon is for women. But first, I think it's kind of important that as the church family here, you understand why Peg. Why Peg? Why did I pick you, Peg? Don't you think it's important to know why Peg, right? So I want to read Matthew 25, 31 through 40. This is Jesus talking. It says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of of the world. It's only the ones on his right, though. Why are they the ones? Well, he goes on, he says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then those righteous ones that are on the right, the sheep, they will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. Now, there's a couple of things here I think we need to look at in this scripture. To me, two of them are really obvious. The first one is that it was the people who chose to do the right thing. The people who chose to do what Jesus or the king wanted him to do. And secondly, 
These people, they were serving and ministering to others, were they not? That's exactly what it said. So number eight in your outline, Jesus is saying in Matthew 25 that the righteous ones are the ones who serve and minister to others. Is that not what a deacon or deaconess is supposed to do? We just saw that, didn't we? It's exactly who they're supposed to be. It's what the sheep do. It's what the righteous do. They serve and minister to others, right? So what's the result of a righteous person? Verse 34 says, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What, is, what kind of day is that going to be? When you get to walk into the kingdom, when you get to inherit the kingdom, that's going to be a great day. Number nine in your outline, the righteous are rewarded by inheriting the kingdom of God. See, to be righteous, according to this parable, one must serve and minister to others. I stand before you today and I tell you that that's exactly what Peg Novak does. I've been working with her for five years in this church. She does it. She serves and ministers to others. And she lives for that moment. It's from her heart. I tell you that right now. But there's one more thing in this scripture I want to point out. I think it's important. Verses 37 and 39 again. It says, Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? You see, these righteous people that Jesus is talking about, to them it wasn't a thing, was it? It just wasn't a thing. It's just what they did. It's just how they lived. It's just who they were, right? See, I, I, it's important to know here. Now, when, when, when the king says, says, here's the righteous ones here. I'm going to put you over here. The people who were doing it weren't jumping up and down and waving their arms. said, look at me. Look at me. I fed somebody. I helped somebody. They didn't even realize they'd done it. It was just who they were. It was from their heart. They didn't need to pat themselves on the back because it came from their heart. This passage tells us, number 10 in your outline, Jesus wants us to serve and minister to others from the heart. It should just be who we are. It's not a T-shirt. I got the T-shirt, right? It's not a hat. It's not a bumper sticker. Right? As Tom says, it's not a fire insurance policy. You can say a few words, take it and stick it in your file cabinet until you're in trouble and then pull it out. It's not how it works. Is he in your heart? Are you loving people from your heart? Are you serving people from your heart? See, what he wants is for you to be that way. He wants you to be that person. Not talk about it, but be it. I submit to you today that that's exactly who Peg Novak is. She's that person. So when you ask why Peg, there's my answer. That's why Peg. So with the support from the elder board, she's agreed to fill a position of deaconess for women. Her responsibilities will include serving and ministering to women and children in our church and in our community. And this is scripturally correct. And it's not just scripturally correct. It is so valuable for our church family. It really is. Let me tell you why it's so valuable. For one thing, I cannot keep up. I just can't. I, there's too many of you. I'm old and slow. I just can't keep up. You know. So getting help with that is going to be great. But I don't know if, I, if the women would not listen for just a minute. I want to talk to the men. Have you guys noticed women are different? Come on. Women are different, right? Sometimes they need to talk to a woman, right? I'm not always going to understand it quite like Peg will. And that's good. I, I don't have a problem with that. I want to be clear. I'm still your pastor as of today. You're always welcome to reach out to me. But now Peg allows all of us to have a second option, one that I think sometimes will be the best option for the ladies of our church family. So when I tell you that the name of today's sermon is The Rock Star and a Clown, 
I'm going to let you figure out which one's the rock star and which one's the clown between Peg and I. <laughs> you guys figure that out. So this time, if I can get Sister Peg to come up, have a seat up here. I'm also going to ask my elders to come up, please. So the scripture said that when they brought these seven people to the disciples, they laid their hands on them and they prayed over them. And that's what we're going to do today. So all of the deacons, uh, or I'm sorry, all of the elders are going to pray over our new deaconess right now, and then I'll anoint her, okay? Brother Bob? Father, we're gathered here today to dedicate Peg to service here at the New Trialsville Bible Church. We ask that you would bless her, keep her in the center of your will, help her to become a blessing to the women and the children of this church, and that they may in turn become a blessing to her. Amen. In Jesus' name. Lord, being a, a deaconess for the women in this church, is a big responsibility and it's a big deal. We know that uh, Peg is qualified, that you have placed in her heart the desire to serve and we ask that you bless that. And as she is being set aside for this position, Lord, we ask that others would recognize that they can go to her and that she will minister to them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray your blessings in Peg's life, Lord, as she embarks upon this. Lord, we pray you'll give her wisdom and guidance as she ministers to the women of this church and the children, Lord. Bless all that she does, Lord, and bless her in the name of Jesus. Father, we're just so thankful for Peg. I'm just so thankful for her heart. I'm thankful for her relationship with you and that it gets to be here in our church every week. We get to see how she handles her life, how she handles people, how she treats people. I'm thankful that she's here and she's on our team and she's a part of our family. And I'm so thankful that she's a part of my ministry. She's a valuable part of my ministry. We love her, Lord, and we thank you for giving us Peg. And now I pray as she moves forward in this office of deaconess for women, that you'll bless her, bless her ministry, make her a resource for ladies that can help them pull closer to you, deal with the things in their lives, feel connected, feel you, just get close to you. That's what it's all about, Lord. And I know Peg is the right person for the job. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold that for a minute. So this is holy oil. It's just oil. But it's been prayed over. It's been set aside as holy. This is the same oil that Tom anointed me with when I was ordained. And the same oil that I um, anointed Bruce with. And I hope it's going to be the same oil I anoint Fred with very soon. Understand that what this is, is it's a setting aside as holy. The work that Peg's going to be doing. I'm going to turn it on. Peg, do you agree? Do you promise to follow scripture as you serve as the deaconess for the women in our church? Yes, I do. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I introduce... The Deaconess for Women, Peg Novak. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor John and elders. In my church home of friends, you're all my friends. I'm just so blessed. I'm deeply grateful 
and I'm humbled beyond words to receive such an honor. And I'm very blessed to be the very first one <laughs> to be in the office of deacon. Praise God. I grew up in a broken home. My mother did the best she could, but we were without a father to take care of us. I learned to care for my siblings at a very young age. I served them. We had no car, no amenities like many families. We had little food and little money. My mother, who you see here on occasion, she finally found a job as a nursing assistant for $1.90 an hour. And that's what we lived on. And that's how she kept us together. But God pulled me out of that situation. He broke that chain. This, is ha this happened when he tapped a high school counselor um, to submit my name for college scholarships and college grants. And that's how I ever got to college. Otherwise, I would never have been there. But this ultimately led me to the Lord. I found Jesus at, at a vineyard fellowship in college. But he gave me a desire to serve right off, just as he guided me to care for my siblings. My journey since then has led me and my family to many opportunities to serve in ministry both Bruce and me. As it says in Galatians 5.13, through love we are to serve one another. That journey has brought Bruce and me here for another opportunity to serve. And I hope my service here thus far has been pleasing to our Lord and it has been a blessing to you. As the song says, mold me and make me after thy will, he's still molding me. And I'll venture to say he's molding every one of us until he takes us home one day. Amen. I will continue to seek him with all my heart and give my best in serving alongside Pastor John, Bruce, and the other women of this church as deaconess. I want to thank you all for having confidence in me. God bless. And now she's going to fill her other role as a leader of our music ministry. So everybody stand, please. Um, join in song and uh, praise the Lord and be thankful for what's happening in this church because it's good stuff. And if anybody needs prayer, I'm going to be right here. Just come on up, okay? I have decided I want to give you praise, Lord God. You are my God. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the I have the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, you did and still have thine own. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now.
Thank you for today, the day we get to spend in your house, today with our wonderful church family. We're so fortunate. We're so blessed to have each other. And we're so blessed that I feel you in here every week, every week. We love you, and we just want to serve you. We just want to honor you. We pray that you'll always be the center of our focus, Lord. Be with us now as we go out into the week to be those people who serve and minister to others for you, to just be that. Not to have to work at it, but just to be that kind of person, to have you firmly in our hearts and in our lives. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hang out for the last song, or I'll amen. be on the unemployment line next week, you know. <laughs> there is power in his blood. Amen. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil or victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Woo! So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the bow belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the bow belongs to you Oh God, the bow belongs to you 